Hi, it's Moser with a quick tutorial on species diversity, species richness, and the overall idea of biodiversity. After you've watched this video, you should be able to distinguish between abundance, species, species richness, and species diversity, and explain how all these factors together contribute to biodiversity. You should also be able to calculate a very simple index of biodiversity and use it to compare ecosystems in terms of their biodiversity. Let's go! Aw, pretty flowers. <laughs> I want you to imagine a field community, a biological community, and right now, to keep things simple, we're only going to talk about the plants in the community. Of course, the community would include all the bacteria and the insects and the mammals and the birds and the amphibians and the reptiles and who knows what else that are living there, but for right now, we're just going to talk about the plants. So in this field, we have some number of plants and we have some count of those plants. And when we think about this field and we want to understand how diverse it is and how many plants there are, there are a couple of ways we can do that. The first idea that we tend to talk about is abundance. And abundance is simply how many things living in a place we have. So this particular community looks a whole lot more abundant than this community. Aww. Though they have all the same species, there's just simply a whole lot more individuals living in this community. So this would be high abundance, and this would be pretty low abundance. I feel like I should play the sad trombone noise here. We can also talk about a community in terms of how many different kinds of things are living here. So notice that this one isn't all that much more abund or all that much less abundant than the previous one we looked at, but there's a big difference. There's only one species of plant in this community versus the four species that we saw in this community. Hmm. Now, here we have a community that certainly has higher abundance. We have more individuals, but just looking at it, you notice that most of them are those yellow flowers, whatever they are. And there are a few other species here and there, but the community is pretty dominated by a single species. Hmm. Let's think about all of these ideas as we start to talk a little bit about how we measure ecosystems. When we want to understand a community within an ecosystem, we very often take samples to estimate population sizes, and from those population sizes, we very often measure or calculate the species richness of a community as well as the species diversity. And when we look at both of these things together as well as the genes that are present in an ecosystem, what we're really talking about is biodiversity. So we'll start with just species richness. It's a fairly simple measure, and the species richness of a community is just the number of species it's got. So this has pretty low species richness, and this certainly has higher species richness. Now, this is still low abundance of living things, and so is this but this situation has got a higher species richness value because there are just flat out more species living in this community. Now what's interesting is that the farther away from the equator we go, the lower our species richness values tend to be. Communities near the equator, or as we get closer to the equator, tend to have much higher species richness. So why would that be? Well, let's look at a picture of an, a biological community in Alaska. Here we go. And this is somewhere on the Great Plains of Alaska looking across to the mountains versus a beautiful rainforest scene in Central America. Well, I'd say that you immediately notice that there are a whole lot more living things visible in one picture, that'd be this one, than in the other, that'd be that one. But the big question is why? Why are there so many more things living here close to the equator than are living here very far from the equator. Did you give up yet? Why? 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 More energy! Well, what kind of energy? Solar energy. It's all solar powered, kid. So that solar energy feeds all the little tiny green things that form the base of many, many food chains, and that allows for more insects, and that allows for more small mammals, and more birds, and more reptiles, and more amphibians. There's just more energy in the system to go around, all because of available solar energy. Cool. 
but species richness isn't the whole picture. Would anyone argue that this community is the same as this community? I don't think so. Or is the same as this community? Again, I don't think so. So let's look at another measure we use when we're talking about biological communities and their diversity. Species diversity is a measurement that looks at both how many individuals, how many species there are in a community, as well as how abundant each species is, or how many individuals there are. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about stability in species diversity in a second, but first let's actually calculate some diversity indexes. So we're going to compare this ecosystem versus this ecosystem versus this ecosystem versus this, or I should say, these four biological communities. We're going to use something called the Shannon, sorry, the Simpson Diversity Index. Now, the Simpson Diversity Index looks scary at first. We've got this big old equation, yikes! Diversity Index equals the sum of n times n minus 1 over n times, oh my goodness. Well, let's just do it and I think it'll be a lot clearer. The things that you need to know are that small n represents the number of individuals of a given species, and big N represents the total number of individuals present. So let's look at our first ecosystem. Well, let's start with this rather sad looking little community here. First, I'm going to count up how many individuals I have in species one, those yellow things. And then I need a count of the total number of individuals. Well, that's easy because there's only one species and there are only five individuals. So my big N equals five, my little N equals five. My Simpson diversity index is the sum, oy vey, I gotta add, of little n times little n minus one for each species. Well, that's easy here because we only have one species. And that's divided by big N, the number of individuals, times big N minus one. When we put that together, we get a Simpson diversity index of five times four over five times four. Well, that gives us 20 over 20, which equals one. Is one good? I don't know. Mm, no. In the Simpson diversity index, a score of one means there's no diversity whatsoever, while a score of zero would be infinite diversity, as much diversity as you can imagine. So the lower a number you get, the more diverse the ecosystem is deemed to be. Let's do another one together. Well, this one looks a little more promising. We at least have four species. So I've listed the species, and in this case, I'm just gonna count them individually, though if this was a real biological community, we would probably employ some sampling measures to get our numbers. We have three of the yellow flowers, five of the red, six of the purple, and four of the blue. When we add the number of individuals of each species together, we get the total number of individuals, which is 18. So when I lay this out, the sum of n times n minus 1 for each species, 3 times 2, 5 times 4, plus 6 times 5, plus 4 times 3, and I divide it all by big N times big N minus 1, I get 68 over 306, which gives me a Simpson diversity index of 0 0.222. That's not too shabby. There is actually some diversity here, though I would still argue that this biological community really lacks abundance. Okay, this one's a toughie. It's a big community full of species. I have four species again, and I've gone ahead and put the numbers in, 32, 19, 21, and 22. When I add those up to get my total number of individuals, I have 94 individuals of all species. So when I plug that into my equation, I get these crazy numbers and a Simpson diversity index of 0.253. Not shabby. Now, is it weird that the Simpson diversity index is lower, in other words, better for that field than for that field? It is. I'm not sure I totally understand it. But here's the thing. When we have better diversity in ecosystems, those biological communities tend to be more stable. Communities with higher diversity indexes handle change better, handle all sorts of stresses on the system better. Well, why? When you're playing Jenga, would it be harder if you started with 10 pieces instead of 50? 
if you had already taken 40 pieces out, does that change how many you can wiggle out of there before the whole thing falls over? Biological communities that are more diverse, that have higher levels of biodiversity, with more species and more individuals, tend to be more stable. They tend to be more resistant to change. Higher biodiversity means more stable communities. Now, I'm going to let you calculate the Simpson Diversity Index on this one for yourself. It's fairly easy because you have zero of species three. Now, I'll count on you to use your pause button to count all of the yellow flowers. The reds and the blues should be pretty easy. Remember that the Simpson Diversity Index equals n times n minus 1 plus n times n minus 1, etc., etc. For each of those species, you're only going to have 3, all divided by big N times n minus 1, where big N is the total number of individuals. Finish it up. Bring your answer to class tomorrow. Have a good one.